Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson. We're in Unit 4, Congruent Triangles. And so uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, three basic concepts that are on your student learning map. And um, we're going to look through uh, what we can tell about some basic things about triangles. A lot of this you already know, as well as some uh, interesting ideas about the exterior angles and uh, of a triangle. Um, as we move through this unit, we're going to be looking at congruent triangles and uh, you know how we tell if two triangles are congruent or not and um, the complexities that and then some shortcuts for figuring that out uh, with a minimum amount of information. But that's later on in the other videos. Let's get started. Just to basically set up, you're not going to draw, you're going to write any notes about this. Just to basically set up this idea of triangles being congruent. Um, I have three sticks uh, or um, six sticks here and two of each pipe, right? And so uh, if I gave one person a yellow or a green one, a red one and a blue one, and another person uh, a green one, a red one, and, and a blue one, what would be the chances that they would create two triangles that are exactly the same? Well, let me show you how what the chances of that happening are. I just uh, kind of moved them around. I didn't change their size in any way. Now let's build the other. I'm just going to kind of open them up and get them to fall into. Now, uh, just with those three sides, did we create two congruent triangles? So let me bring it over here. It might not be too obvious because they're kind of facing a different way. So let me rotate it around. Okay, and they're kind of facing the same way. Okay, so let's move them into place. Let's take a look. Sure enough, the two triangles end up being exactly the same. Now, we just had the three sides. What's really cool is that the angles are exactly the same as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is in this chapter, we're going to explore the idea of how to make triangles that are congruent with minimum information. Once the, in this case, once the, if we pick in sides that are congruent, it forces the angles to be congruent, which makes the triangles congruent. All right, let's move on to our notes for this section, 4.1 to 4.3. Okay, so here we are, and let's go ahead and put a date in there, okay, so that you can keep track of these things, okay? All right, so uh, Unit 4, Congruent Triangles, we're looking at 4.1, 4.3 basics and remote interior angles. That's the big concepts. And so one of the, uh, in your um, student learning map, one of the um, uh, uh, concepts or one of the, the, the I can statements is that you can class triangles by their sides. Okay, so basically, um, we have three types of triangles that when we're looking at them and we look at the side information, we can classify them as equilateral, isosceles, and scalene. And of course, the equilateral is a triangle whose three sides are all congruent. Um, and isosceles is two sides are congruent, and then a scalene is no sides are congruent. Let me give you some And there you go. Um, so when we see a triangle and we're looking at side information, we should be able to identify with one of these three words which kind of triangle it is. Let's look at the angled ones. Okay, so let's look at uh, the types of ways we would identify triangles. We have equiangular, all the angles are congruent, obtuse, one obtuse angle. Uh, do you know what you call a triangle that has two obtuse angles? Not a triangle, there's no way. Uh, if you look at that, if you put two angles that are greater than 90 in a, in an ang in a triangle, then you're already over the 180 degrees uh, possible for all three angles, so there's no way of having two obtuse. The same thing is true for a right angle. You couldn't possibly have a triangle with two right angles. It, it's not possible. And so then finally you have an acute triangle where all the uh, angles are less than 90. Okay? All right. So looking at triangles and you see angle information, you should be able to identify um, uh, and classify triangles by their angles using one of these four words. Okay, so uh, it also says that we should be able to write equations to find missing angles in triangles. And so let's say we had this problem here. What I know is that one of the basic equations of a triangle is that the sum of the interior angles, right, is equal to that n minus 2 times 180. Um, but we already know that the sum of the interior angles just from memory is 180 degrees. Okay, if I plugged in 3 into the n minus 2, you'd get 180 degrees. Okay, so the sum of the interior angles. So I would, should be able to write the equation y plus 45 
uh, degrees plus that 130 is not an interior angle. So we have to think for a second, how do I get this interior angle? Hopefully you're at the point that that is an easy step for you. Using the idea of a linear pair, these two angles add up to form a straight line. So on my own, I craft that that equals 50, and then it should all equal 180. I'm going to leave the algebra of that for some other time. Okay, so one of the basic ideas that you're going to need to be able to do is write equations for triangles. The most basic equation is right there. The sum of the interior angles equals 180. Sometimes we're going to have to find a missing angle just by taking exterior information or something like that to figure it out. Okay, let's go on to the next idea. All right, so let's uh, look at some facts about the exterior angles of a triangle. First of all, the sum of the exterior angles is equal to what? So just put me on pause. This is, this is like one of those uh, easy questions. I hope that it's already popped into your head and you don't really have to put me on pause. But if you're not sure, just put me on pause and look at that sum of the exterior angles is equal to what of a, of a triangle? Here's a hint if you've come back and still are not sure. The answer to this is true all day long. All right, there you go. It is 360 degrees. We've known that forever and ever. The exterior angles of any polygon all add up to 360. Now, if it's a regular figure, I can find out what each exterior angle is on their own. All right, let's look at another fact. In a triangle, there's three interior angles, and each interior angle has an exterior angle. Okay, so all, you get an exterior angle by extending one of the sides, and it forms an angle outside that is made up of one of the sides of the angle or of the triangle plus the extension so there's an exterior angle there's another one now get used to drawing those little arrows to help you indicate in your mind as well as to tell a story of what angle you're looking at so each interior angle has an exterior angle and you should be able to draw it now i'm going to just erase a couple of those real quick you don't have to i just want to show you um those exterior angles, I extended a certain side to get the exterior angle, but at each um, corner of the triangle, there's an exterior angle that has a matching, like a cousin, that looks identical to it. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at this angle. So if I was to extend this side right here, I would create at this vertex right here another exterior angle, right? Because it's an ex it's an extension of a side and a side of the angle, or a triangle. Now, certainly I'm extending a different side than the red one, but what ends up happening is I create identical exterior angles at this point. Those two are exactly the same, so it really doesn't matter at each vertex, at each corner, which side you extend, you're going to create a vertical angle that's identical to its cousin on the other side because they're vertical angles, okay? Let's go on. All right, I want to show you an exterior angle theorem. It's actually the triangle exterior angle theorem. This only works for triangles. Basically, it says this. Suppose I have a triangle and an exterior angle to that triangle. Now, remember, we have different exterior angles at different corners of the triangle. So this really applies to any place I go. It just happens I draw this drawing here and extend that one side to create that angle one. It, it's, you know, I can do this with any one of the exterior angles. Basically, it says this. The measure of any exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Okay. Now, from our vocabulary words, we learned that two and three are remote interior angles when we're looking at angle one. Other exterior angles would have different remote interior angles. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So, in other words, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. Okay, I like to write it like this. The measure of the exterior angle is equal to R1, subscript 1, not an exponent, it's not up high, it's down low, R1 plus R2. And if I memorize it that way, I'm not trying to memorize numbers like 1 and 2 angles because they're going to be in different places. But the idea of the R helps me remember their remote interior angles. Okay? All right, let's look at an example. Okay, so if you look at this figure, um, it's drawn... Let me slide it up there a bit. It's drawn, so it looks a little bit different than our original theorem written uh, drawing there to kind of show you it doesn't matter where the exterior angle is. In this case, I drew it kind of by extending this side, right? I extend that side, and I got this angle 2x out here, okay? That angle is an exterior angle. It's made up of an extension of a side and a side of the triangle. So from our theorem, 
it says that the measure of the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remotes. Okay, so then let's just solve that. Put me on pause, do the algebra, and come back and check it with me. So x is x equal to 64. Now, if I asked you what that exterior angle measurement is, I'd just simply plug it back in there and double it to 128. Now, I could certainly, um, whoops, in this problem, I certainly could have wrote this equation, which is the sum of the interior angles, and found out what that missing one is. I called it y just because it's y, and I could make it anything I want. I could solve for that y, and then let's find that real number, and then say 2x plus that number equals 180. And that's a lot of work when we have this simple exterior angle equals the two remotes. Plus, when the problems get a little bit more difficult and those 46 and the 82 angles, those two angles are using expressions that have 5x plus 2 and things like that, finding y becomes a lot more difficult. Okay, so keep this uh, problem in mind. All right, you try this one. Um, see if you can find out what x is. And then, um, yep, let's just see what x is. Okay, put me on pause. And use the um, exterior angle theorem. That means you're writing up the measure of the exterior angle equals remote 1 plus remote 2. Go ahead and do that. Write it without any numbers in it. Then write it with the numbers. Solve it and come back and check with me. Okay, so I hope that you got x equals 16 on that one. All right, there you have it. Let's go ahead and write up a summary and get ready to do our dual problems. But before we do that, let's take a look at this problem and see um, how to classify this triangle. So you should be able to look at this triangle, get the information and decide you know, from either angle information or side information. So in this one, I might say, hey, classify this according to its angle information, what kind of triangle it is, okay? So some of you would make an incorrect classification that it's right. And the reason you do that is simply because it looks right, and we can't go by that. We have to look at the facts, okay? So let's find all angles, make sure we have all the information before we make any assumptions. So once we write an equation, we'll call that angle C. I can say 20 plus 30 plus that measure of angle C equals 180, triangle sum theorem, um, that the angle measure of angle C is 130 degrees. So that's not a right triangle. It's actually an obtuse triangle, okay? Just poorly dr drawn. So before you classify, make sure you have all the pieces. This includes if you're classifying by sides, that you have all the sides before you make any assumptions, okay? All right, let's go on to our do-it problem. All right, so here's your do-it problems. They look long and lengthy, but they're pretty quick. Hopefully, they're quick for you. I'll zoom in so you have them. There's a bonus at the bottom. Keep it on this page, okay? Let's go. Let's scroll through this. Put me on pause if you need to. Very good. Good luck. 